I usually bike to work or in the winter when I'm grounded, I walk. A typical morning is reviewing a number of papers. I'm an editor for science. What I'm seeing is the iteration of all those cycles. Yeah, yeah, the result of all those cycles. Okay, okay, that, that's clever. And then I'll have these subgroup meetings. I usually don't go out for lunch, I eat lunch on the fly. I'll write grants like everybody else and hope they're funded. You get excited as you go along because somebody comes into your office and says, hey Steve, look what this looks like. Wow. So that's my day. <laughs> It was a time when you went into the lab about 8 in the morning and went home about 10 or 11 at night. We probably did this six days a week. And so even though you're working very hard, you're pretty happy because it's discovery, it's the kind of thing you want to do for the rest of your life. It just makes you excited about being a scientist. You see on the screen behind me a picture of a cell. And if you look at the dots in the cell, those are clusters of enzymes. Those enzymes, which were not known to be clustered before, and that was a discovery in our lab about four years ago, what we're doing is we're finding out things that nobody else knew about. What we do here is to work with materials known as enzymes. An enzyme is a protein molecule that basically acts as a catalyst. Catalyst, by definition, is a molecule that converts one thing into another and enzymes are, are important in all life processes. We'd like to know how all these work because when they go wrong, you get into things like diabetes. So what we're trying to do is manipulate these enzymes in a medical sense to provide new pharmaceuticals. So we're meeting at two, you and I and John. The way I run my laboratory is I have 12 wonderful uh, postdoctoral students. And so on a weekly basis, we sit down together and we discuss what last week's progress or lack of progress brought. My philosophy is that I'd rather be in there with them. For me, it's a great deal of enjoyment to see how they discover things and also to share in that excitement when they find something. And that's a key part of the training or mentoring process. Not only are you teaching them science in some ways, you're a father or a mother figure, because my wife has worked with me over the years. Uh, she's been an integral part of this. So that's part of the camaraderie, too. We've been very, very fortunate. These young people have done extremely well in their careers. Seventy of the people that passed through my lab have uh, university positions worldwide on prestigious faculties. A number of my people have ended up as vice presidents or head of research groups in pharma companies. You just can't be anything more than proud. That's your family. Now what's happening with the force experiment? I think science offers the opportunity to really draw on all of your talents. And then it's not just for yourself. Many of the things you're going to do then spread out through your community, through society. It's the best stuff you've been doing. If you're getting there, good for you. Good for you. My legacy in many ways is not only what I put into the scientific literature and our discoveries, but how they go out and pass the torch on to their students. And I want to be sure that they do it with the utmost class and integrity and excitement. <laughs>